it's Erin. Let's talk about nutrition. Since a lot of us don't have access to a gym, we're not training as hard, or perhaps we're not getting the same amount of volume as we have been getting. So we have to adjust nutrition accordingly. This does not simply mean reducing your calories, although that is an option. It's not a very fun option. I'm going to share with you seven tips that will help you adjust your nutrition so you can continue to see results even though you don't have access to a gym. Let's dive right in. The first tip, know what your BMR is. BMR is simply your basal metabolic rate. This is the number of calories that your body needs just to survive. So let's say you stayed in bed all day, you did absolutely nothing. This would be the amount of calories that you'll burn. If you don't know your BMR, don't worry. In the description below, I'm gonna share a link and you can just click on it and enter your information and that number will just pop right up. The reason you wanna know your BMR is because you never want your calories to drop below this amount. What this is gonna do is it's gonna help your metabolism stay high, so it's gonna prevent you from plateauing, and it's just going to give you that energy you need in order to survive. The second tip, do not rely on wearables or trackers. There's a huge tendency with trackers to overestimate your activity level and underestimate the amount of food that you eat. And when you have a mismatch like that, it tends to lead to an unfavorable result, right? So let's say you have a workout, your Fitbit says you burn 700 calories and maybe you only burn 300 calories. A lot of times we'll compensate by eating more. And what this does is it has us run a surplus for the day. So on paper, it may look like we're not, but in actuality we are. So the idea is, is to avoid using trackers. Just go by your BMR and make adjustments in 200 to 300 calorie increments at a time. So for example, if you are trying to cut down, take 200 calories off of your daily caloric intake and do that for about a week. Take measurements, take progress pictures, and see where you are after that week, and this is gonna help you gauge your progress. You'll be able to see if you need to adjust by taking calories away, or if you can adjust by adding more calories back in. The third tip, eat clean. And what I mean by this is just choose simple one ingredient foods. This does not mean go get fat-free, you know, high protein chips or snacks or Walden Farms or any of that kind of stuff. Eat your simple one ingredient foods. This is going to increase your levels of satiety. So you're gonna feel fuller longer. You're gonna get your macronutrients in. So that's your protein, carbs, and your fats. And you'll also get a good amount of your micronutrients in. So those are the vitamins and the minerals. Tip number four. Eat within a shorter time window. This is especially helpful because if you shorten that window of time of eating, you'll just tend to eat less. So for example, a good rule of thumb to start would be seven o'clock in the morning to seven o'clock at night. So you're curtailing that eating a little bit earlier at night. This is going to allow your body time to digest. You're gonna eat the majority of your food when your metabolism is high and you are just geared for digestion. If you already eat within a short window of time, you can try shortening it even more but if your body is stressed in any way or if you're under stress go ahead and keep it to that 12 hour window the fifth tip is to reduce your carbohydrate intake or strategically time your carbs around your workouts so when you're most active eat the most carbs and taper down as the day gets later think about carbs as gasoline in the fuel tank it's what's going to make your body go so you wanna eat your carbs when you're most active. You don't wanna fuel up that gas tank and park the car in the garage, also known as sleep. That makes no sense. So try not to fuel your body when you're not active. Tip number six, eat protein at every meal. Protein is the building block of muscle. It's gonna help with satiety and it's also going to rev your metabolism. So if you're eating about a gram of protein per pound of body weight, you're doing great. If there's room for improvement, go ahead and increase that protein. It is very hard, if not impossible, for the body to take dietary protein and convert it into body fat. So if you're going to overeat on a macronutrient, it would be protein. 
So load up your plate with that lean chicken breast, fish, egg whites, even protein shakes, one a day. So eat your protein at every meal. And the last tip, make sure you are tapering your food off towards the end of the day. There's an old saying, king, prince, pauper. So that should be how you structure the meals or something close to that. So your largest meal should be earlier in the day, followed by a little bit of a smaller meal, followed by an even smaller meal. So at night for dinner, what you'll do is have maybe like some salmon or some steak with some veggies and you know, 6.30, 7 o'clock at night and call it good but in the morning, feel free to have a nice big breakfast. And you can adjust this a little bit depending on when you train. So if you train mid-afternoon, you can have your largest meal, let's say either right before you train or right after you train. But as it gets later in the day, just make sure you're tapering off that food intake and tapering your carb intake. Those are seven quick tips to adjust your nutrition while you're not training or maybe your training volume has decreased. I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope you guys are finding ways to train hard. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching. Until next time, eat well and train hard, y'all.